Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today we're talking about the Guns N' Roses song One in a Million. Now this is a song that a lot of people have asked me, Sid, are you going to cover it or are you going to leave it alone? Because I'm a Guns N' Roses fan and even though I don't like all their songs, um, I wanted the series to cover every Guns N' Roses song with the exception of like every song from the Spaghetti Incident. So today we're talking about One in a Million from GNR Lies and let's get started. So the song, as you would expect, was solely written by Axel himself, and it takes on more of a folk rock, acoustic rock track. It's the eighth track on GNR Lies and was released in 1988, and the lyrics really describe Axel's experience on getting hustled in a Greyhound bus station upon first arriving in Los Angeles. And the song is notable not only for its controversy, but also for being one of the Guns N' Roses songs that Axel wrote solo. So according to various interviews, and there's been tons of interviews, uh, Rose wrote One in a Million on guitar, which he was not really proficient at at the time, so he only wrote the song using the bottom two strings. And this differs from a lot of other Axl Rose written Guns N' Roses songs, which you know Axl would normally compose on piano or keyboards. This is the first Guns N' Roses song to feature piano played by Axl on the outro. Now the song, of course, because of the lyrical content, caused great controversy amongst different groups and the band was accused of being homophobic and nativism and racism were leveled against Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose and music critic John Perellis noted that with One in a Million on GNR Lies, the band tailored its image to appeal to white heterosexual nativist prejudices denouncing blacks, immigrants and gays while coyly apologizing to those who may take offense in the album's notes. Now, here's an MTV news report from 1988, 1989, talking about the controversy. Hey, with a new strain of racist propaganda reaching out toward white youth, it is disquieting to hear the leader of one of the biggest white rock bands in America sing a song that attacks not only foreigners and homosexuals, but also, as Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses put it, niggers. Equally disturbing, part of the distaste felt by many white hard rock fans for disco in the 1970s was an often unspoken resentment of the black and gay people who were in large part its stars. But few things so strikingly suggest how far pop music has strayed from its 60s vision as the Guns N' Roses song, One in a Million, with its startling assault on immigrants and, as lyricist Axl Rose puts it, faggots and niggers. Immigrants and faggots. I used the word niggers because it just fit real quick. It fit, it was accurate, and it wasn't being derogatory to a large group. Niggers is a word that has got thrown onto the black race, and it's, it's stuck better than any of the words that they've come up from white people. And to where now it's just, among black people, it's just common, common language, you know, like, and like saying, yo, man, it's like, yo, nigger, or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of different meanings to that word, but a lot of people just take the time to assume that when a white person uses the word nigger, it's meant that's a whole black race, and you're derogatory, and you're a racist. It's true that black people have used the word nigger among themselves. One in a million is intended to be taken the same way. I was talking to Axl Rose about that song. I met up with him in Los Angeles. Nice guy. I asked him, you know, what, what, what's, what about this song? And his point was he wasn't saying it from, as him. He was saying this is what people say. That was, he, he said that's, that was his, just to present his point of view. But one in a million, based as it very much seems to be on Rose's own experiences when he first arrived in Los Angeles, packs such an unpleasant punch for the very reason that there's no apparent distance between the song's writer and its angry young protagonist. Maybe this isn't a case of racism. Maybe it's just an artistic shortcoming. Rose, whose partner, the guitarist Slash, is half black himself, doesn't consider himself a racist. And some black people don't even think that his use of the word nigger should be that big a deal. So, you know, if he wanted to express his thoughts, Guns N' Roses, peace. Especially those who admire the music of such groups as Guns N' Roses and Public Enemy can do something. They can call these people to account. Everyone that's an artist has artistic freedom to do what they want. I am completely against censorship. So I think Axl Rose has the right to say what he likes. And, but if he puts it out in the, you know, in the public eye, then, then, we, then he has to deal with the reaction. 
So in a 1989 Rolling Stone interview that Axel did, he explained the lyrics by saying, I use words like police and the N-word because you're not allowed to use the N-word. Why can't black people go up to each other and say N-word, but when a white guy does it, all of a sudden it's a big put down. I don't like boundaries of any kind. I don't like being told what I can and what I can't say. I use the N-word because it's a, world to, it's a word to describe somebody that's basically a pain in your life, a problem. The N-word doesn't necessarily mean black. Doesn't John Lennon have a song, Women is the N-word? is the n-word of the world there's a rap group nwa i mean they're proud of the word more power to them guns and roses ain't bad nwa is bad the front cover of gnr lies uh, actually was designed to look like a mock tabloid newspaper front page and it actually contained an advanced apology for the song suggesting controversy was anticipated a small article entitled one in a million credited to rose ended the song is very simple and extremely generic or generalized. My apologies to those who may take offense. So in response to the f accusations of the band being homophobic, Axel actually stated that he was pro-heterosexual and I'm not against doing what they want as long as it's not hurting anybody else and they're not forcing it upon me and spoke of his negative experiences in the past, such as seemingly a friendly man who let him crash at his hotel floor and then tried to rape him. He later softened his stance and insisted that he was not homophobic, pointing out that some of his icons, such as Freddie Mercury and Elton John, as well as David Geffen, the head of the record label, were bisexual or gay. And Axel was also accused of being biased against the police due to the negative lyrics in the song which mentioned them. Axel responded by, by claiming that when he was a teenager, he was once mistaken for a girl by two police officers who then proceeded to make sexual comments towards him, infuri infuriating him so much that he attacked the officers, resulting in his arrest. And it didn't stop there because other musicians, including some of his peers, um, accused him of racism for the use of the N-word in the song. When Guns N' Roses and Living Color supported the Rolling Stones for a concert in Los Angeles in 1989, Living Color guitarist Vernon Reed publicly commented on One in a Million during the band's set. And Axel was infuriated that he actually suggested that Guns N' Roses play the song One in a Million just to piss off Vernon Reed. Now, during one of the performances that Guns N' Roses played opening for the Stones, Axel actually addressed the controversy. Here's the audio for you guys to listen to. Before we start playing, <laughs> calm down. Calm the fuck down for me. Okay, I'll wait. I'm fucking tired of this publicity bullshit about our fucking song, One in a Million, with police and niggers, immigrants and faggots, and radicals and racists. I don't give a... I don't give a goddamn fuck what fucking color you fucking are, as long as you ain't no goddamn thief, drug using, fucking crack selling piece of shit. <laughs> a fucking nigger. That means if you go downtown and some fucking asshole is trying to sell you free parking for 15 bucks, kick him in the fucking nuts. I don't give a shit about gay people either, but I don't need some faggot trying to rape me. Immigrants, I don't care what fucking goddamn country you're from. You're in America, just act like it, that's all. Somebody comes to sit in these spots, we gotta go. If you don't fucking got a problem or what color you are and you wanna call me a racist, shove your head up your fucking ass. So Axel's bandmates also publicly commented on the song at various times throughout history. So Izzy talked a little bit about the song. He said, I have a big problem with that lyric. I've talked to Axel many times about his lyrics. You don't need to say that, Axel. You're an effing immigrant. You're, everyone's an effing immigrant in America. Don't you see you're putting down the whole of America? And, you know, Izzy basically said, you know, it's hard enough just to get by. At the same time, you know, it's also just rock and roll music. And, you know, whenever it's more controversial or effed up, it's more interesting. Now, Izzy also said, whoever said that this was responsible music, uh, you know, Guns N' Roses are not role models. He also said living with that one in a million fallout was heavy shit. I don't know Axel, I don't know if Axel learned anything from the experience. I would hope he did. And he also said that Slash said the best thing uh, about the controversy in an interview he did 
where he said Axel's free expression was all well and good, but he'd hate to think about what would happen if any other band got thrown in jail and had to explain the lyrics to the other guys doing time. Because during that period, I ended up in jail in Phoenix for a day. I, f I found out it was pretty effed up. And Izzy also talked a bit about how the other band members were telling Axel, don't put that song on the record. They said, you're white, you've got red hair, don't use it, you know. And Axel basically said, F you, I'm going to do it just because I'm Axel. And Izzy said, okay, go ahead. Of course, you're guilty by association, but what are you going to do? Axel's out of control, and I'm just the effing guitar player. And Duff talked about the song in his autobiography from 2011. He basically said, it's a song that Axel brought in the lyrics for called One in a Million. When he first showed them to us, I cringed at some of the words, especially the N-word. It wasn't that I thought Axel had racist views. There was never any question on that front. I realized Axel's lyrics represented a third person's observation about what Reagan-era America had become, a nation of name callers, a land of fear. It was just a word my mouth would not form. Among my earliest childhood memories was my mom pulling me out of kindergarten to march in the peace rally after Martin Luther King was shot and killed. But Axel was bold and nobody at the record label seemed concerned. And also in the same book, Duff talked about how the band started becoming associated with David Duke, who used to be a former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. So he said, Axel's lyrics in One in a Million immediately caught attention. The press labeled us things like David Duke's house band. I heard that the KKK or some faction of the Klan at least started using the song as a war cry. I stood by my original interpretation of the song and Axel's intentions. Art gets misunderstood all the time. Still, I found myself uncomfortable as a result of this particular misunderstanding. Now Axel talked about how he actually came up with the song, so he basically said it was originally written as a comedy. It was written watching Sam Kinison during one of his first specials. I was sitting around with friends, drunk and with no money, and one of my friends had just gotten robbed for 78 cents on Christmas Day by two black men. And he also said that I played it on guitar and it was done very slow and in a different tone of voice and done very humorously. Well that didn't work out when we recorded it because I had Duff play it on guitar because he could play better and in better time. And Izzy put uh, the other guitar thing in it and it evolved into something of its own. We didn't plan on a song to be as forceful as it was. We walked into the studio and boom, it just happened. And you know, by 1992, it seems like Axel's tone on the song had changed a bit. So he basically said he had a new perspective on the song. In one interview, he said, I was pissed off about some black people that were trying to rob me. I wanted to insult those particular black people. And also one of the final things he said about One in a Million is that, in my opinion, the majority of the public can't be trusted with that song. It inspires thoughts and reactions that cause people to have to deal with their own feelings on racism, prejudice, and sexuality. Now Slash, being half black, also had his own comments on the song. If you watch the VH1 special back in uh, 2004 that did on Guns N' Roses behind the music, he even said that he felt uncomfortable with the song, especially considering he was half black. And Slash said, everybody on the black side of my family was like, what is your problem? My old girlfriend said, you could have stopped it. What am I supposed to say? Axel and I don't stop each other from doing things. Hopefully, if something's really bad, you can stop it yourself. It was something he really wanted to put out to explain his story, which is what the song is about. Axel is a naive white boy from Indiana who came to Hollywood, who got brought up in a totally Caucasian society. And it was his way of saying how scared he was and this and that. Maybe somewhere in there he does harbor some sort of bigoted feelings because of the way he was brought up. At the same time, it wasn't malicious. I can't sit here with a clear conscience and say, it's okay that, that it came out. I don't condone it, but it happened. Now Axel is being condemned for it, and he takes it really personally. All I can say really is that it's a lesson learned. Slash also talked about when Axel first came up with the lyrics for the song in an interview with Rolling Stone back in 91. He said, when Axel first came up with the song, and really wanted to do it. I said, I didn't think it was very cool. I don't regret doing one in a million. I just regret what we've been through because of all the way people have perceived our feelings. Now, Steven Adler also talked about the song in his own autobiography that came out in 2010. He said, one in a million featured the wildly controversial lyrics about police and N-word and immigrants and gay people. And I thought it was a great song that needed strong words. It expressed a heavy sentiment that had to be delivered with no punches pulled. I knew the words weren't directed to the majority of blacks, gays, or immigrants. It simply described the scumbags of the world. The song explained the shit that Axel, a naive uh, hick from Indiana, had gone through. Now, Guns N' Roses had, you know, went through the years of controversy when GNR Lies came out, and you would think, okay, you know, things are going to die down. And then in 1992, Guns N' Roses are going to play the Freddie Mercury tribute in uh, London in April of 92 and because uh, Queen was the one who was organizing the whole concert and it was for AIDS awareness 
and uh, there was a lot of controversy over Guns N' Roses being included on the bill. In fact, a lot of gay rights groups protested Guns N' Roses' appearance at the show, and Slash actually addressed the controversy in numerous interviews, which you guys can see here. Um, you're going to London to do the show at we're Wembley, doing the, the, yeah, the, the Queen thing, and then um, we're that's doing kind of a controversial date, huh? It turns out that way. I never would have thought that I, we were going to get that kind of flack. I well, like, maybe I should just explain really quickly. You're doing a, a show in London, a tribute to Freddie Mercury uh -huh. uh, for AIDS awareness. Right. And there are some... Uh, gay group activist groups that are a, l a little bit appalled, I think is a good word for it, coming from them, um, about us playing it. And I just wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. Trying to get and we're going to play anyway, so... They're trying yeah. to get other artists either not play or to convince the they're, audience they're to trying boo. To get, Have you heard this? They're trying to get us off the bill or basically sabotage the gig. I don't know exactly what they want to do, you know, or what they're really shooting for. Because it sounds so screwy in the first place. I don't think they really know what they want to do themselves. You know? Well, it'll be interesting. I know they'll go to press with it and keep it up all the way up until show day. But um, I don't want to get into the whole subject, but... I mean, we're doing it for for the reasons that we're doing it. it was you know for Freddie Mercury and, and not you know, I don't know how to explain it. Um, we just wanted to play the gig, and we were asked to do it you know by the Queen people, and we've been supported by you know all the other bands that are playing. So we're going to play it. Yeah. If that answers you know, the question. Yeah, it's just it's interesting. <laughs> it's a, a hotbed of activity like, in the Guns N' Roses camp. It's just screwy stuff to have to deal with. It's like. Every single day, it's like, oh, yeah, right. Okay, we got to deal with this now. You know? that, that you, you guys are a magnet for that, it seems. I, well, yeah, but, you know, we don't ask for it. You know, at least we don't purposely go out and ask for it. You know, it comes up, and it's just like you're not expecting it. The uh, rehearsals that we go on this week here at uh, Wembley Stadium, and right now we're back, backstage at Wembley in one of the dressing rooms with uh, another headliner here, Slash of Guns N' Roses. You guys have been uh, uh, tried a couple of years ago to do uh, play a benefit for the gay men's health crisis, and now you're here at this AIDS benefit. Is this like an issue for you guys? Well, it's... it's Well, it's an issue for me. It really cramps my style. The whole AIDS <laughs> thing is really... Not I'm not, it's not clicking with me, you know. But um, uh, we, you know, things come up, and we're like, well, yeah, we'd like to get involved and try and do something to help it out. But then it turns around on us, right? Uh -huh. And they got like all these gay activist groups and jumped on our our case uh -huh. for being involved with this to the point where there was a question as to whether or not it was even safe for us to do this gig. And finally, we just said, screw it, let's just do it, you know. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, whatever. I hope you know we don't get shot or anything. Or like threats but it's like I don't know what what they're so uptight about. Yeah. You know, they were saying they were going to do whatever they could to sabotage the sh our part of the show, and they they had totally attacked the whole Queen organization for allowing us on the bill and all this stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> it, it's never ending. You know, yeah. it's always something. It's like so ridiculous. So in 1998, Marilyn Manson talked about the song One in a Million and actually revealed that his band had covered the song. And he talked a little bit about his views on the song as well and the storm of protest that followed. So he said it's interesting to see that Axl Rose would write a song like that and then back down in the press and not be able to defend a statement, he says. If you're going to have the balls to make that kind of statement, then you should, have, then you should be able to back it up. So I figure I'll say it and then show him how it's done properly. These people really don't know how to do anything right. I have to take up all their slack for them and I'm not doing it because I agree with their statements, but because somebody needs to do it properly. And Manson was asked if there was going to be fresh outrage over his version of One in a Million if they ever released it. He said, go bother Axl Rose. He effing wrote the song. It's not my effing problem. And let's look at where the song ranks on the best to worst Guns N' Roses song list. So if you look at Medium.com, it's the worst song according to them out of Guns N' Roses catalog. It's ranked 80th. But if you look at Spin.com, it ranks pretty high. They ranked it 17th on their list. So there's also a demo of the song available that maybe you guys have heard or maybe you haven't. I've linked to it down below. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the live performance of the song. So the song has only been performed live three times. It was first performed at CBGB's back on October 30th, 1987. And the last time it was performed live was in the Cleveland Music Hall in Cleveland, Ohio at a May 5th, uh, 1988 concert that Guns played. Now the easiest live version to find is the CBGB one, which is all over YouTube. I've linked to it down below. And that does it for my true story episode looking at the controversial Guns N' Roses song 
one in a million. I've also got one up for Get in the Ring if you guys haven't seen it. That one's a really good episode as well. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the song and uh, where's it rank on your Guns N' Roses song list. Comment down below and let me know. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. And be sure to follow me on social media. The links to my Facebook and Twitter are down below in the description box. Take care.